everyone, it's Michelle from Tape and Twine and Creative Cottage Studios and today I'm here to videotape a little um, craft with me I guess. Come on in. Okay here we are in my messy studio and what I was thinking of was looking at some of my random containers and vessels that I have and picking out maybe a teacup that is pretty a little dirty this one is I'll grab this one am I making you sick I hope not let's see what else Oh, I really like this yellow one. Isn't that yellow one pretty? I'll just grab a stack and then we'll do some talking. Okay. It is Tuesday the week before Mother's Day, and I decided that I would do something a little bit different for a video. We are not going to be able to probably make it to any stores to buy gifts for our moms, and some of us are really watching our pennies because we're not working, and I thought it might be fun to do a little craft with me that can also be a gift and can be something you can do with your kids for grandma or um, not that a lot of dads watch this video but it would be a great thing for fathers to do with their their kids for mom's day so just a little idea so basically I know that I have a lot of old teacups sitting around that I don't really have anything to do with them and it would be a great idea to take these vessels, whether they're teacups or old pots or even old mugs that maybe you have that aren't in the best of shape anymore for drinking but are still really cute. Maybe even a mug that means something to mom. And we are going to make teacup gardens from them. And we're going to try to keep the cost to almost nothing because I won't really think with everything that's going on in the world right now it would be terrific if we could do something using the things you already have rather than buying a bunch of new things so the only thing that i'm going to say we're going to need right now is a vessel either a teacup or a little pot or a tin of some kind uh, tea tins look really cute and we'll need some soil which I would recommend maybe some potting soil for that, but maybe you have some in your garden shed or in your in your basement. And we're going to actually go into the woods and around the yard and gather some things that we can get for free. And we're going to make a magical little garden inside a teacup. So let's get started. Okay, here I am at the woods behind my house and I have my two friends here Piper on the left hi Piper and honey on the right and I'm gonna let them off leash because they'll literally pull me this whole time okay girls we're gonna go this way and we are gonna go gathering for things in the woods this is important message before you gather items for your tea cup garden Please only take items from your yard or places that you have permission to gather from. Do not take plants or items from public parks or protected areas. Also, make sure you know what you're gathering. Don't grab plants you don't know what they are. Nobody wants a garden that has poison ivy or other plants that cause rashes in them. Be careful out there. This should be fun, but use your head and follow the rules. Thank you. Now, when I'm looking for a, I'll try to go slow so that I'm not making you sick. When you're looking for items for a miniature garden, you literally need to think small. 
And you need to think about two things. You need to think, let's, number one, let's look over here. Are we making a garden that's gonna last a week or two, or are we making a garden that we hope is gonna last longer? Now this moss here, with this little tiny um, amount of, with some greenery growing in it, would be a great, a neat little thing because it has this shoot sticking up and it's not growing on much. Look at that's rock. So we know that it can grow in something shallow. So we're gonna grab a couple of these and we're not gonna grab a lot. Keep in mind, you don't wanna go to like the public park and just start digging things up. You need to make sure that where you're grabbing from, you have permission and it's either common land that's fine or um, you know your property or something like that. So if that's some pretty pretty dry moss. Look at there's a different kind of moss in there and that's kind of neat. So I'm gonna grab that and let's see what else we can find. We are on a like a base of a tree. We have all this great neat moss here and these little growths. We have something called princess pine which we're not allowed to pick here in New Hampshire. But they make for great little trees if they're if they're something that's not protected by you. And look at these great little, these lovely little ferns. So these are all way too big. They're not right now for a a teacup garden, but they're way too big um, for you know a week from now. But let's say you were making a fairy garden out of something a little bit bigger, like a basin or a whiskey barrel. These things would be great um, to transplant. Now these are all shade related and you don't need to know a lot about plants to know that. Just look at your surroundings. We are in a pretty densely uh, crowded little forest here or woods so there's not a lot of sunshine that comes down here and this is where they're thriving so we know that this would go well in a shady area so this is perfect for inside the house because it's shady but also like if you were putting it in a basin or a larger area you would want to uh, keep it somewhere in the shade not full sun every now and then you're going to come across something like this it's like a, a dried lichen and it's got a neat texture. This is perfect for a little garden because first of all, it's already dry, so you don't have to worry about killing it. And you actually could make a dry garden if you wanted as well. So I always pick these up even if I'm doing a regular um, garden just so that I have some extra greenery that I don't have to worry about. You know, making teacup gardens is really all about using your eyes to see things in a different way. It's about creativity and you don't have to be artsy. You just have to be, think outside of the box, which items would look good in a garden. So if we just plant ourselves and don't move, and then let's just look around us. Okay, so here's, here's some moss that I really like. I like it because it's a nice texture and it's already round. And if I take my little spade and just flip it, I can probably, and look, it's already like circular. So I can put part of it on my teacup just like that. Let's see if I can get to the other side. I probably could have cut it out I like how the texture of it. Okay, here's my next thing. Can you spot it? It's a nice, flat, round, and empty acorn cap. We can use this as a roof to a house. Um, so let's grab a few of these. Okay, so this is fun. Look at these little flowers. Aren't they sweet? I'm not sure if they would wilt before I plant them, 
But then there's all these little pods. Oops, let's see if I can focus in on them. They're all growing out of the moss. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of these. Now, now this little violet would be perfect. It's super tiny. You see what my fingers? And even though it will get bigger and might not last a super long time in the teacup, it will certainly last longer than, let's say, a vase of flowers. Um, we're used to buying mom something like that for Mother's Day. And we don't mind that in a week or so, things start, start to go by the wayside. So if you look at this as maybe a temporary um, garden, that would be okay. Because I'm not gonna plant them right away, probably in an hour or two. I've put some bins of water out and I'm going to stick the plants in them just to hydrate their roots and make sure they stay fresh until the time I use them. Okay, so now it's time for us to make our gardens. So first of all, we are gonna look at what kind of containers can you make a garden in? Well, you could start with a simple mug. Honestly, this is cute to put a garden in and it looks great in a kitchen or on a windowsill. So this is just, you know, an inexpensive mug. You can probably get a mug similar to this at the dollar store or you probably have one in your house. Maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it has a little chip or has a little chip under here. Perfect for a garden. You could use a teacup because they're just really beautiful to have um, gardens in. And it seems like we all seem to inherit these somehow and I don't know too many people who have fancy tea anymore and these just really look sweet on a windowsill you could use an actual pot like this one that you can get at a store if you wanted to but again I started this project with saying let's use what we have so um, you could use a pot and we all have little pots hanging around. A little terracotta pot would even be cute. And espresso mugs are really cute because they're so tiny and they're usually pretty delicate and a lot of times they're white, which makes a perfect palette. A perfect palette for, um, for that. These I happen to have gone in at Goodwill which I know isn't open right now, but you can get teacups and mugs and things like this at thrift shops so inexpensively. And they make great little bases for gardens. So what do we need for this project? Well, we need our vessel. We need some rocks. I have the little tiny ones and the bigger size ones. We need our plants and things that we've found around. Um, and of course we need some potting soil which again it doesn't cost a lot this bag was three dollars and 49 cents at the grocery store or you can get it at the home you know your home depot kind of store Lowe's or you can even I think they even sell it at the dollar store but if you're really trying to skimp and you just really don't have the money to go out and buy it Go in your backyard, dig some up from the garden. Now, that's not my first choice because when you use garden soil, you could be bringing friends in the house. And by friends, I mean things that you might not want in the house. Little friends that show up later, maybe that are wintering in the dirt. So I would say garden soil is always the best way to go, uh, potting soil, plus the fact it's made to retain moisture and there's... Um, you know nutrients in it so what we want to do is we want to put in the base of our our vessel some rocks and the reason we do that is because there isn't a hole oh see I got this at a thrift store so it was a dollar cute for a dollar huh um, so what we want to do is put the rocks at the bottom so that our roots are not sitting in the water when we water it. So I'm going to get some potting soil. And I'm going to do that off camera, but you can hear me getting it. And a lot of times the potting soil is already damp, which is, which is good. Okay. 
So I'm going to put a few rocks in the base of my teacup. And then I'm going to put a little potting soil in. We'll see how much of a mess I'm going to make. And then I'm going to fill it to about there. I don't want to fill it all the way up because I want to have some room for the greenery. Now, of course, we need some water. Let me get my water. I'm just going to put a little bit of water in there so that it condenses down a little and it's ready for the plants. Okay, so now we can try to figure out what do we want on this garden. We have collected some of these, the moss. See how the moss will look really cute on there? We will have to build up a little bit more dirt for that moss. But I am going to do it only on the front side because I want to plant something back there. So this moss, um, it's pretty dry. It's very dry under here. I had put a tray with some water in here. So this moss is not quite as dry as this. So let's see if I can hydrate this moss just a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. I'm just going to press it down for a minute. I'm going to pour a little bit of, actually, I have a little spray bottle of water. Now, if you do this the same day that you get the moss, you won't have to do this, but this was a couple days ago for me. And it's been in here in my studio, so it's a little bit dry. That's better. So I'm going to put that moss right on the front of my teacup there. And I don't know if you can see, it's like there's space down in there. And that's kind of flush. And then I'm going to see what kind of little plants do I want to have in the back here. Now we had these little forget-me-nots, which are really cute, but they're not going to last that long, if you recall. And I just went in my garden and picked some flocks, which look how long these are. Again, these aren't going to last that long either. But the greenery, if it's getting fed, will stay green. So I think I'm going to try to plant these. Now, if I'm giving this as a gift, I just really want it to be pretty for the same amount of time that a a, a thing of flowers would stay nice. And I might say to the person that I'm giving it to that, you know, the flowers will probably go by the wayside. But I think, you know, it would be nice to have a little bit of flowers in this one. So I'm going to put the flowers in. I'm going to put a little bit more dirt on it. And then I'm going to water that little, that little flower. I think this one has a little bit better chance of staying green and flowering than the forget-me-nots, which I think once they pass, I don't know how many flowers will come out, but I'll think about it. You know, if you were doing this with kids and the kids wanted to put them in, I'd say put them in. You know, maybe the, the kid can say that you could have it like the, the child is going to be the landscaper and then would re replace the plants that die. Okay, so then we have these little plants. Remember these? They have the little purple on them. I'm going to put in one of those, and then I want to put in maybe something, a different kind of moss than this one. So I'm going to put in, I'm just going to rip a little bit of this kind of moss and kind of put that under there. I might have to put, it's awfully muddy. I'm going to pick a different one that isn't quite, one that's a little bit more full. And always check for little friends on these two on the bottom. You know, make sure there's no like little buggies or anything. I am going to um, stick that there. And now I'm going to take this over. You would take it to a sink, but I'm down in my studio, so I'm just going to open the door, and I'm going to just gently pour a little bit of the water 
over it to hydrate it but also to sort of um, just clean off the cup you don't want to douse it because you don't want there's no drainage hole on this remember and you don't want the dirt to be so wet that your plants are going to die so you could either just spray it which is another option and take a paper towel and clean it which would be fine too and maybe I'll do that because I didn't water it quite a bit let me see if I can tip it so you might say well that's a little like off you got these flowers here and greenery here but it, it looks a little strange to me well now this is where you start doing a little of the decorations this is just like a you know they call them turkey tails I think they're just they grow on the side of a tree they're like a lichen you can kind of put that in there's the white side or the side that has the the turkey tail it's kind of hard to see because it's not tipped sideways um, and then these are little hemlock pine cones they look very cute in a little garden place that right there and then remember we were picking these up off the ground um, just little dried pieces of the light green lichen I'm just gonna stick that sort of in the in the end there so now we're getting even a little bit more color and we're getting more texture and we're going to put something really cute as the centerpiece like a house or you know some kind of little miniature so don't forget that we will have something else there and if you have some pretty rocks or a shell or something else that's natural you could put it in there so let me see what I have around so I have like this smooth rock I got at the beach you could you know put a rock in there you could put um, how about those gemstones that you get for floral design or a marble or something so like these gemstones that you you put in vases and things those can also have kind of a little magical appeal to them so I'm going to move this one for now Let's work on another one let me do Let me do one that's in this mug. I'm going to put some rocks in. So I'm going to have a little follow-up video that has that has how to make how to make a little polymer clay house. And I'll make a couple of pots now that we can put those houses in. And again, you could put anything in the pot. You could put a miniature that you might have around. Remember in my original video, I showed you some little violets that were growing? These will be perfect. So I think what I want to do is I have this big piece of moss. Do you remember this? It had the little white things growing up in the, the tiny little, the tiny little pods. I think what and I really hydrated it well it's very damp I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it in half I'm going to put enough soil in that it goes right to the top I'm going to take these little violets I'll put a little bit of water in there first again I want it I want it moist but I don't want it so soaking wet that these guys are gonna end up dying on me I 
think I'll just take a pencil and make a hole and put that put its roots in and then and I have to I want to make sure that I leave room in the front there to put the house on now I'm going to come in with that piece of moss I just cut and I'm going to come underneath them so that they actually are held in place by the moss and this is so very very simple because it's mostly just the moss there. We have two little plants here. Then we have that little white one that was growing, remember that? Okay, so now I'm gonna speed up the video and you're gonna see me trying to finish up this garden by going through some of the things that we found in the woods and in the yard and making this teacup garden the cutest I can with what I had on hand. I will be then making part two of this video, which is what's going to make the garden come alive. And that's making a little tiny fairy house out of polymer clay. It couldn't be easier. There's really only a couple things you'll need and very, very inexpensive and anybody can do it. So once we make the polymer clay fairy houses, we can stick them into our gardens and that's going to make the whole thing come alive and look like a little fantasy environment, a little world that um, makes the teacup gardens just work. Just they, they just makes them special and individual. So I hope you enjoyed this teacup garden part one and um, you can go out and make your gardens without making the house and then make the house after or you can make the houses first so you know what you want to look around with. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you'll tune in for part two. Thanks.